Hello everybody, so again, another topic about the essentials of the Zabbix. So not exactly a new feature or new functionality of the Zabbix 4.0 or uh, Zabbix 4.2, but still quite a cool thing, uh, which could be used to perhaps by you and your company in your monitoring setups. And uh, I'm talking about uh, inventory. So if you know, and most likely you do know, because well, it's kind of obvious here in the front end, there is a separate tab called inventory. And inventory is supported inside a Zabbix for a long time. And basically this allows us to store and uh, map some inventory fields to our Zabbix hosts, which later on can be used together with some, let's say third party scripts that would use an API methods to collect an inventory data about these hosts and uh, form some kind of inventory reports that on a daily basis could help you to work with your monitored environment. So long story short, how to actually configure inventory collection and uh, how to set all that stuff up. First of all, when you create uh, any new host inside a Zabbix frontend, you can click on it to open the configuration and you see there is also a separate tab called inventory, but by default in a default installation of the Zabbix, it will be always disabled. So by default, you are not collecting any inventory data. To change that, you need to go administration tab. Um, don't forget that administration tab in the front end is available only to the Zabbix super admins. So if you're not a super admin, you will have to ask your colleague. Uh, we need to proceed to administration general, then drop down, uh, click on the other, and uh, there we go. Default host inventory mode by default is disabled, but we can change it to the manual or automatic. Let's start with a manual. So click manual, update. But here comes the important thing. By changing the default inventory mode for uh, for our hosts in Administration Global, it will change the default inventory mode for the new hosts that we will be creating, but it will not change or override the inventory uh, mode for the hosts that are already created. So I have my inventory host and it still is disabled, which means that if you already have a fully set up environment and uh, after watching this video, you decided that you want to use inventory, you will have to use either option one API to update all of your existing hosts and update them in terms of in inventory mode, or you could do that over a uh, SQL query. So those are basically two options. Of course, uh, can be done also manually here in the front end, but uh, I don't think that that's a proper way to do it in a large instance uh, in a production, let's say. So if we change this to manual and click update, we have all of these fields like the MAC address type, operating system, uh, software, uh, physical location, site country, primary uh, name, notes, and, and stuff like that. So all of these fields, since we selected the mode manual, can be filled in manually, like type server and name will be um, Linux host and operating system will be Linux. So we can fill on all these fields, click update, and then if we'll go to the tab inventory, let's say hosts, and uh, there we go, we have inventory hosts with these inventory fields. We can also use some kind of filtering for uh, inventory field and contain some kind of the value. This will work very good in case if we have like really a lot of hosts with different inventory values. And in the inventory overview, you can use the filtering uh, group. So all and grouping by, let's say type. And you see, I have, since I have just one host, uh, uh, so type value is server and I have one host with such type value. And click on it. I can see my host and click on the host and I can see all of its uh, details as inventory fields and in the overview, just an overview about this host with its uh, IP address or DNS name, the shortcuts to some other tabs like the latest data or configuration of uh, host itself, items, triggers, graphs, discovery or the web checks. 
I can click on the host name inventory, in this case itself, and it will allow me to use my pre-configured front-end scripts. So these three are the default ones, detect operating system, ping, trace, but uh, you can also create your own, but that's perhaps a topic for another video. So that was a manual. Then a next automatic. If we will go to the host uh, configuration, I'll go back configuration hosts, uh, click on my inventory host, inventory tab and change it to automatic. Click update and you'll see that nothing actually changes. So I can go host update and go back to the inventory, inventory tab, it is automatic. I still have the same three values I've entered manually and uh, it might not be very clear like what do I need to do to actually collect those inventory fields manually. And the answer is pretty simple. Um, like usually in the Zabbix to collect some kind of the data, you need to create an item. So as example here, I've created just one item called system.hostname that actually returns host name of my monitored host, which is uh, just like usual uh, my CentOS 7 virtual machine. And inside this item configuration, there we go, the system hostname type Zabbix agent. So it's a Zabbix agent key, system.hostname key itself. And I am looking for a parameter called populates host inventory field. So here I can specify, um, let's say, let's say a tag. So the value of this item will populate the host inventory field tag. And now, if I click update, if I will once again go to my inventory host in the inventory tab, there is a tag value and here in the arrow we can see that it comes from the system host name. Right now there is no value because the value was not yet collected so we need to wait for the next update interval. It is 30 seconds so should be quick enough. Uh, let's go back to inventory. Inventory tab, still not there. Let's do the refresh. Inventory, and there we go. So now we can actually see the grayed out value Zabbix dash series. And if I will go here in my Linux host where this actually is happening, the host name is Zabbix series. If I will open my front end again, go to the monitoring latest data, uh, delete my previous filters, search for the host inventory, there will be just one item, and the value is a Zabbix series. Then let's say I've changed the host name to uh, just Zabbix. So now the host name is Zabbix. Let's wait for the next uh, monitoring cycle, so after 30 seconds. I believe there's no re big reason to change the update interval right now, like 30 seconds is okay. And uh, well, all I wanted to show that when we will actually receive a new value each time, it doesn't matter how frequently that will happening, the inventory field will also be overridden. So if before it was a Zabbix series, at this moment right now it should be already Zabbix, there it is. So we can go to the configuration hosts, Inventory host, click inventory tab and you will see the tag is Zabbix. So these were the most common things like inside a frontend, how to use and uh, what we can get with the help of uh, manual and automatic inventory modes. Uh, disabled of course is just disabled. But now the most common question in the community and from the Zabbix users is like, hey, how can I add my own custom inventory fields or how can I change the existing ones? And instead of like most common answer, you can't, I will show you the way how you can actually do that in, uh, in some matter. Not like absolutely, uh, you won't be able to add new fields, but you can at least change the names of the existing ones. To do that, there's no way to do that in the front end, like uh, clicking on the names itself will not allow to change the name. But it is possible to do that in the front end files. So I have a CLI here and uh, 
Here I have open CLI of my uh, Apache Docker container, so where all the front-end files are hosted, like uh, you see the examples. And we're looking for the file called uh, host.eng.php inside include folder. So inside this file, if you will scroll down, you will find a lot of these fields like one, two, three, four, five, and you see the number, then a database field and a title. Well, the title is the exact thing you see here in the front end. So right now we have a type. Let's go back to the CLI and let's change the title to my new field. Right. So I've saved the changes. Then come and refresh the page. And right now it is in the inventory, my new field. So it's pretty simple, like uh, uh, no, no big science. Just open this file and change the name of the title. What is important here that you are not able to change the database, uh, database table, database fields. And we definitely do not recommend to do that, even if you have a permissions to do so. Uh, so all of these uh, values that you fill inside the front end or that if they're filled automatically are written to the database table called hosts underscore inventory. And each DB field type, type full name, of course, also has its own specification in terms of uh, maximal length you can specify. And it is definitely not recommended to change anything inside a database. And additional downside of this change here in the inventory fields in the title is that after each upgrade of your front end, and I'm talking specifically about a front end, not a database, not a Zabbix agent. When you will upgrade the front end, these changes will be gone. So obviously, if you will replace the PHP files, then the default values again will take place. So each time after an upgrade, you will have to go back in this host.eng.php file and change the titles as uh, your company decided uh, it should be. But it is uh, one of the easiest way how you can actually change this, change the name to something that is reasonable to you. And uh, that's about the end of the short, actually short video for today for the inventory. And uh, ways how you can collect it. Um, we talked about a manual and automatic, but remember about like wide functionality of the Zabbix. Remember that there is an API engine with like 260 plus something methods that you can use to get, uh, create, edit, or delete any kind of configuration in the Zabbix, including the front end, which means that technically you can create some third party script in your preferable language and integrate Zabbix together with some automated inventory collection tool in that way your inventory collection might become easier. So let's say you would not have to create an items that would collect that data, but instead you will just scan a computer's with inventory collection tool and then use the Zabbix API to populate those fields in the Zabbix itself. So that's about it. Just like usually, uh, leave all your questions, comments, uh, click likes, click subscribe buttons if you like what we're doing here. And uh, thank you for today and we'll definitely see you in the next videos. Thank you and goodbye.